I guarantee you it's not gonna stop. Devin, Jason, it's not gonna stop. She wouldn't allow it to stop. And we won't either. From inheriting crucial documents. From a dearly departed friend. To the discovery of several artifacts. That could reveal some of the secrets. Of this treasure hunting spot that is Oak Island. Here's how the curse of the Oak Island crew. Was affected by the 2000. Year old documents. Found at Oak Island. For many years now. The fans of the Curse of Oak Island have watched as the Langina brothers and their hard-working crew have attempted to take on the overwhelming challenge of finding the treasure that has eluded so many treasure hunting adventurers for so many years on the mysterious spot just off the south coast of Nova Scotia that is Oak Island for more than 200 years. All these people have to show for their work on the island, is a stone slab that was covered, with several mysterious markings, mysterious fragments of human bones, and a lead cross whose origin may actually be traced back, to the medieval times, as it was said to have probably belonged, to a member of the Knights Templar, as if it isn't bad enough that so many men, had risked it all to make it to the mysterious island. The amount of material that Zena has wrought, the width and breadth of the lady's accomplishments, and research, it was stunning, that is the word, stunning, it may be even worse for those who had lost their lives, to this treasure hunting endeavor, it gets even stranger when you hear, that the death of these six unfortunate men, may have something to do with a curse, that was placed on the hidden treasure of Oak Island, apparently, the curse demands that seven people have to die, as they search for the hidden treasure of Oak Island, before it can ever be found. I think we all have just a very rudimentary understanding of the work as it relates to Oak Island. Be that as it may, the Lagina brothers and their dedicated team have stopped at nothing to get their hands on this elusive treasure of Oak Island. Perhaps that is why today they seem to be drawing closer to this elusive treasure now more than ever. With the likes of Craig Tester, they hope to get as deep into the ground as possible. This is after an underground survey of the island was carried out. It resulted in the discovery of underground voids that could possibly be the hiding place of this treasure that's evaded many for more than 200 years. So one of the things that was found is a actual copy of the Corona document. It's a deposition by this English Templar Knight. This is because such voids may be connected to the original money shaft that is universally known as the money pit. So far, the team could record some progress, thanks to the discovery of the remains of a possible tunnel that lay deep within the ground at a depth of 93 feet, as well as evidence of human activity that was traced to about 173 feet into the ground. This looks like the Lagina's have a lot of excavation work ahead of them if they are going to get to the bottom of their deep leads. That may be the only way they could get to the treasure that was rumored to be hidden deep within the bowels of this mysterious island. Understandably, this has led to the digging of a new borehole by the team, looking to see what they could find within these tunnels. Located so deep into the ground before long, they found evidence of tunnels that were more than 100 feet into the ground. Money pit collapsed in 1861, and a whole bunch of wood sort of went missing. So one plausible theory is we're seeing that collapse. We're in the collapse zone. Who were the guys digging these tunnels to begin with? That's what we'd love to know. While we may not be able to know for now, at least we can focus on an object that was discovered in the same area last year. This was the so-called Chapel Vault that was discovered at a depth of 170 feet, apparently. The vault was first discovered by William Chappell and Frederick Blair, a pair of treasure hunters that took on the Oak Island treasure hunting challenge about a century or more ago in 1897. Once they came to this discovery, they also came to the conclusion the Knights Templar were a band of warrior monks formed shortly after the Christians had retaken Jerusalem in 1091, and pilgrims were going from all over Europe to Jerusalem on a long, arduous journey. And when they arrived in the Holy Land, many of them were actually kind of attacked in the desert, going towards Jerusalem. Dot 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 that. It must be about seven feet tall. Eager to learn more about the structure, they decided to drill into the vault, and as a result, 
they were able to extract evidence of gold. Thanks to their drill bit, as exciting as this was, the team was also excited by the discovery of a parchment. However, the treasure hunting bear would soon leave in despair. This was due to the fact that when the bear tried to extract the box from the soil. I don't know if this is 100% accurate. I don't. I do believe with 100% certainty that it's worth some commitment of ours. Dot 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 they found that the tunnel that they had spent so much time digging began to flood with a ton of water unbeknown to them. This was one of the many booby traps that had prevented many that had come to the island from extracting any treasure from the soil. After coming across the so-called chapel vault, they found that they had made things worse for themselves when their drill seemed to have pushed this seven-foot vault even deeper into the ground. Despite such a setback, Rick Lagina has declared the sentiment of others that they had to see if they could peek into this massive vault. What on earth is up with this tunnel? From the ball foundation, it's pretty extensive. If it is very intricate workings to hide a very significant treasure, that could be it. It just may be where the treasure of Oak Island may be hiding. Consequently, the team goes to work drilling at the site of the original money pit. As this was going on, Craig Tester, along with other members of the Oak Island team, decided to convene for a meeting at the war room. There, Rick was able to tell the team about his stunning trip to New York. Why was it so stunning, you may ask? Well, about a week ago, Rick was shocked to hear that Zena Halpin, a well-respected scholar of history and seafaring affairs of the past, had passed away. Despite such a sad event, I'm feeling sort of a childish excitement to see what we've only seen in pictures, to dig up and see with our own eyes what that enigmatic and peculiar U-shaped structure is. Rick and the team were lifted out of their sorrow because apparently Zena had left her life's work to Rick following her demise. This included a wide variety of books and documents that connected the mysteries of Oak Island back to the activities of the Knights Templar. In fact, these activities could be traced back to the 12th century, right in the middle of their medieval organization's heyday. As you can imagine, this was exciting news for Rick and the rest of the team. The problem with doing this the simple way, which with a long-reach excavator, is that we do not have a stable hole. I mean, if we had dug a big pit with stable sides, even Davin Halpen, Zena Halpen's son, was excited about this because this meant that her life's work wasn't going to come to an end because of her death. Back in the war room, you could tell that this stunning inheritance was a big win for them. With any luck, Zena's life's work may provide the clues that they need to get to the bottom of the mysteries of this peculiar island. Granted, the information may be disjointed, but hopefully, once the items are shipped to the island, it's kind of nostalgic that is. Dan dug it in 71, and we are going to reveal it in its entirety, and hopefully bring that data to Dan and show him they may be able to digest its content properly. That said, Rick had taken it upon himself to show the rest of the team a document that he found. This document gave the details of a member of the Knights Templar who set off on a year-long voyage to the New World a place that was once known as Antiora. This also came with what was known as the Cremona document. It was a collection of maps and journal passages, recorded by the 12th century Templar knight, known as Ralph de Sudley. Apparently, not only did this knight head to Jerusalem, where he obtained certain historical relics, which were rumored to include the coveted Ark of the Covenant. We do argue about safety, Rick but you have to go in there to do it. He is impulsive, and he's fearless. Dot dot dot. The knight and his comrades had also set off on a trip to the New World, as it was known back then in the year 1178. This has a lot of historical implications, because if these records were true, it means that the Knight Templar may have beaten the likes of Christopher Columbus to the Americas. Understandably, there can be some doubts as to the authenticity of the Templar Knight's account of his voyage with his comrades so many years ago. I'm just so thrilled to know that her life's work isn't just gonna stop right now. However, 
the likes of Rick believe that they must carry out some work to confirm if the document was true and accurate. With any luck, it may help them overcome the mystery of the hidden treasure of Oak Island. They have to make the most of this material, that's for sure. As a result, Rick proposed the establishment of a research center. That way, they can carry out most of their research work on the history of their mysterious island there. Doesn't seem like a bad idea, does it? Care needs to be taken to try to understand what's happening inside of the shaft. In a number of ways, this water issue has to be dealt with. At least that way, they can house Xena's work and can make progress with it. There may be a lot more to gain from Xena's work and they owe it to her and those who have searched for this treasure for so long to get to the truth behind the many mysteries of Oak Island to the pleasure of those in the war room and undoubtedly those at home Marty and the rest of the team seemed to agree that it was truly about time to establish such a research center hopefully this will help them separate fact from fiction I still believe there are answers in that swamp I still believe that but as of yet we can't prove it. Following this meeting to establish a research center, Craig Tester and Charles Barkhouse returned to the Money Pit area so that they could see how much progress had been made there. This is because of the recent seismic scanning, which told the team that there must be a man-made tunnel more than 100 feet below them. As you can imagine, they had a lot of digging work to do. Fortunately, they weren't gonna stop until they came across that elusive treasure so many people have been searching for for so long spray it under pressure and as it expands it will seal off that intrusion of water possibly completely now the team plans to extract soil from depths of up to 10 feet so that they can extract samples of earth that may also have evidence of things that may have happened on the island the plan was actually to study these samples because they may lead them to the treasure or any underground vaults that may contain the treasure that they themselves have been searching for for some time now within moments of breaking through the soil sample the team found a flat piece of wood that could have been part of their tunnel or chamber understandably this got the team excited because this told them that they may be on the verge of a breakthrough we had walked by that stone many times and he had it took to Ray, a fellow from reflex who was doing the clinometer work in the money pit to notice it and to bring it to our attention after all the wood was from a structure that was put together about a century or so ago. Now what they had to do was to figure out what it may be a part of. Some pondered on whether it could be a part of a tunnel designed to protect the priceless treasure. However, most of the others involved in this treasure hunting frenzy hoped that it could be a part of a tunnel that would eventually lead them to the treasure in question. Fingers crossed for the latter. Soon, they were joined by Rick, as the men studied their wooden sample, as they still hoped that this could be part of a tunnel that lead to the original money pit. There's only so much you can see, between the clay and the water, but it's real, and that's the important part. There's a wood structure down there, and at that point it becomes okay. The supposed home of the treasure that they had been looking out for. This reminded us of a group of treasure hunters who tired to get to the bottom of the original money pit back in 1861. They also hoped that they could avoid the constant flooding problem that had plagued all of those people who dared to take on the treasure hunting challenge of Oak Island. They took on the flooding problem by digging an adjacent tunnel that got down to a depth of about about 105 feet. Hopefully, there'll be an artifact or two within that material. I just think there's something uniquely strange about this well, and I hope, no pun intended, that we get to the bottom of it. That's dedication for you right there. Afterwards, they decided to continue digging until they felt that they were underneath the vault or treasure chamber. Unfortunately, they'd find that their remedy for the flooding proved to be useless. As the closer they got to the bottom of the treasure chamber, the tunnel began to flood. What can a man do at this point? Things took a turn for the worse. When the same workers realized that they had heard some crashing noises somewhere down below, it says, willingness to perch above that hole. You're 40 feet in the air, and there's a pipe at the bottom that wouldn't pale you if you fell. If you fall in there, 
you're gonna die. This made them speculate that the money pit had collapsed. This could have meant that a good amount of the treasure hidden within the so-called pit may have been washed away across a deep flooded debris field. Despite such bad news, Ricky hoped that if they could find this tunnel that their predecessor had dug, maybe they could trace it back to the original money pit. Love to. We puzzle now over why was that stone shot found down in the money pit? Are they an artifact that was absolutely connected to Oak Island and perhaps here to this land? Unfortunately, the location of this tunnel or shaft, which is known as Shaft 6, has been lost for more than a century now. As a result, finding what was known as a searcher tunnel may just be the breakthrough that the team may have been pining for. With any luck, this could help them locate the exact position of the original money pit, and maybe even the treasure that is supposed to be hidden deep within its bowels. We can only hope for the fulfillment of such a dream. Let's see what they may be able to discover from the soil sample that they extracted. Today is the last day. There's no question about it. Dumas have to pack up. We have really only half a day of real active search agenda. Within moments, the team rifled through the dirt. This helped them find what they believed to be the floor of the vault, or the chamber that was down there. Eager to make some more progress, they decided to find another drill site. After reaching depths of 128 feet, this was mostly because there was no need to dig any deeper, as their reaching a depth of 128 feet meant that they were 10 feet deeper than where they suspected the original money pit to be. The hand-drawn map is clearly Oak Island, and then there are several things named in French, which have been translated for us. One is called the Basin, translated from French. Well, that clearly correlates to the swamp. The following day, the team welcomed the arrival of that research center that Rick had asked for. That way, they could have a library for Xena's life's work, and a place where people interested in the history of Oak Island could come over to carry out some research. Great idea, Rick. Once they admired their new research center, the team was even more excited because now they actually have a place where some research could be done. Getting metal detector hits. That's a game changer if it could be verified. There should be no metal in a solution feature. This would be a great start for what they were trying to achieve out there on Oak Island. Following this, the team is joined by Oak Island enthusiasts. Doug Crowell and Paul Troutman. Turns out that they were there so that they could help the team unpack the vast collection of research material that the team has been able to gather over the years. With the most prominent of these materials belonging to the recently departed Xena Halpen. This reminds Rick of how the wonders of Oak Island serve to bring people together to create a life-changing community of Oak Island enthusiasts. Doug and Lair date the boot to 1908. 1909 sort of changes in importance to me. Now we want to proceed because it ties with Doug's awakening to the possibility that we're digging in the shaft that Roosevelt dug in. After all, even a much smaller version of this idea proved to change Xena's life. And with any luck, their new research center will change the lives of many hoping to learn the many secrets of the mysterious spot known as Oak Island. While work on the new research center was taking place, the likes of Jack Bigley, Peter Fornetti, and Gary Drayton, the team's metal detecting expert, decided to spend part of their day out on Lot 21, an interesting part of the island located on the east side of the island. Can't say we found the flood tunnel itself. But what I see and hear is a lot of water rushing in, and it appears to be rushing in from the uphill side, in other words, from the landward side. After all, just three weeks ago, Gary and Rick came across one of the most significant discoveries the Curse of Oak Island team had made. What was this discovery, you may ask? Well, this was the discovery of a gold-plated brooch which was later determined to be about 700 years old. Truly incredible. As such, you can't blame the team for wanting to give Lot 21 a good look over once again. The gold sampling of the water and now the wood is probably the thing that might carry the day this year. I mean, that was the hope. It was always the hope. Once they were on the plot of land, 
the trio got to work with Gary's metal detector, who knows what they'll find this time. Before long, Gary's metal detector soon started to sound the alarm, as it began to pick up something that was hiding right underneath them. The excitement was palpable as the group guessed on what they could have found underneath the soil. After spending a short time digging, the team unearthed what they thought to be a cap badge. Let's see what they will find while they are out there. Within moments, the metal detector was at work again. Find the original money pit, and at that point we can unleash the hounds, if you will, expose the actual works of a 222 year old treasure hunt. Hopefully it would help them find something even more exciting than their recently discovered cap badge. Turns out that they were able to discover another part of the cap badge. Once the two parts were put together, the team realized that this French badge could be traced back to the 1700s the same decade in which the original money pit was dug up by Daniel McGuinness. What did this mean? Could the French have anything to do with the hidden treasure? There's a pretty square wall along one side. Very interesting. He almost only could come up with one explanation. Why there could be man-made anything in that cave, with some sort of deposit of treasure. After all, the treasure is rumored to belong to Marie Antoinette, who lived and died during the 1700s. Did the cap badge have anything to do with the brooch that they had discovered just a few weeks ago? These were just another part of the mystery of Oak Island, as the team is left wondering what these individuals may have been looking for, or in the alternative, what could they have been protecting while they were out there? Sometime later on that same day, the team headed over to the original money pit site. I'm pleasantly surprised that there might be a way into the cave. It would be even more interesting if we saw some man-made feature in there. Perhaps it's buried in the silts on the floor. It was because the diggers had already begun work on digging a new borehole in the area. They were digging up a new borehole in the hopes of making the most of one of the team's most promising shafts today. This could have them find the link between the tunnel and the original money pit. For more than a century, the team had been in search of the true location of the original money pit. Hopefully, this excavation exercise will help the team bring this mystery of the original money pit to an end. Holy shamoly, all right. It's a cross. Oh my gosh, I mean, that is an old, old cross. With any luck, they could find the original money pit that was dug up all the way back in 1795 by Daniel McGuinness and his friends after they came across a circular impression on the ground all those years ago. Alas, they would be just the first of many who would be stumped by the treasure hunting challenge that Oak Island had to offer. Just like the McGuinness crew, so many others would make that long trip from all corners of the world just so that they could give this treasure hunting venture a go. Alas, they would all return home empty handed. Maybe it was meant to be. After all, if they came across this treasure all those centuries ago, we would not have the pleasure of watching the Lagina brothers and their crew as they do all they can to surpass their predecessors. The question is, where is the money pit? That has always been the question regarding any of the work over the last 225 years. I mean, we've drilled exhaustively. That way, they could finally prove who this hidden treasure belongs to. For long enough, all we've had is suspicions. As we mentioned earlier, some believe that the treasure belonged to Queen Marie Antoinette. However, there are others who were of the belief that the treasure surely belongs to one of the prominent pirates who enjoyed the golden age of privacy before all the powerful forces of Europe pulled their troops together to quench the plague of the pirates. Seeing the void cavity, your first thought, of course, is, you know, is this possibly connected to an offset chamber or a previously unknown void cavity tunnel? And might it lead somewhere? As compelling as these tales of pirates in the open seas may be, especially as some believe that these treasures could have belonged to Captain Kidd or the infamous Blackbeard, there are many others who believe that this treasure must have belonged to the Knights Templar, just as we may have alluded to many times before. With any luck, 
the Lagina brothers and their dedicated team may be the ones to lift the curse of Oak Island from inheriting crucial documents from a dearly departed friend of the group to the discovery of several artifacts that could reveal some of the secrets of this treasure hunting spot that is Oak Island. Here's how the curse of the Oak Island was affected by 2000 year old documents found at Oak Island. 